Good afternoon. This is the second Wednesday Vesper service in our Lenten series, uh, Return to the Lord. Uh, the order of service is page 229. Uh, we will begin with the opening hymn, 880. When it comes to the prayers, one addition to the prayers is that uh, Mark Koivala's father, Les Koivala, Les and Shirley frequently attended when they were here uh, visiting their, uh, visiting Mark and Teresa, but Les passed away on Sunday, so we'll include that family in our prayers. We'll remain seated for the opening hymn 880 and rise for the opening verses.
Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him.
2 Samuel. And while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city Gilo. And the conspiracy grew strong, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged, and throw him into a panic, and all the people who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king, and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Second reading is from Acts chapter 3. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent then, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The third reading is the second of our Passion readings drawn from the four Gospels, uh, the second part of in the Garden of Gethsemane. Even while Jesus was saying this, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a detachment and officers and the chief priests and Pharisees. They came to the place with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went out to them and said, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, had taken his stand with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I told you that I am he. If I am the one you seek, then let these others go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken of those you gave me, I have lost none. Now he that was betraying Jesus had given them a sign, saying, The one whom I shall kiss, that is he. Seize him and be sure to take him away securely. He went straight up to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? They came then and laid their hands on Jesus and took him. When those who were about him saw what would happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus answered, No more of that. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. All they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Do you imagine that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he will send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? The cup which my Father has given to me, shall I not drink of it? Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a thief, with swords and clubs to take me? When I was with you day after day, teaching in the temple, you did not lay your hands on me. But this is your hour, and the hour of the power of darkness. All this has happened, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. There was a certain young man who followed along. He had only a linen cloth about his naked body. They laid hold on him, but he slipped out of the linen cloth and fled away naked. Then the detachment and its captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was the one who gave counsel to the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. O Lord, have mercy on us. And thanks be to God. We join in singing the response for Philip. 
Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. situation and the sins committed hopefully in such a way that we also see the ways our own sins pull us away from God but hear his call to return to him because he offers reconciliation and forgiveness in our passion meeting today the chief betrayal of course was that of Judas Iscariot he makes a deal with the chief priests and scribes to turn Jesus over to them doing it for money doing it full, knowing full well that their intention is to have him killed, and doing it with a sign of friendship, with a kiss, making that betrayal even worse, perhaps. I don't know if he thought perhaps Jesus would get himself out of the situation, as he often did in the past. He certainly was remorseful afterwards. But even so, his actions are hard to comprehend. What could make Judas do such a thing. We have no problem recognizing the sin in what he did, but it may be harder for us to see the sin when we betray Jesus through our own actions. I want to get back to that in a moment, but first I want to look at, set the stage through those first two readings that we heard this evening. First, that betrayal, or the situation our first reading of King David, the betrayal by his own son Absalom, and then his trusted advisor Ahithophel. It is indeed a story of betrayal on many levels, but it is also one where we see how sin can beget one sin, can beget many others, and the consequences of sin ripple out to impact many more people than we might expect. It actually goes back a few years prior to that sordid affair between David and Bathsheba. David, of course, sees Bathsheba bathing on the rooftop, he initiates an inappropriate affair, she becomes pregnant, and he tries to cover it up by uh, trying to kill her husband, setting up for her husband to be killed. Following that, of course, David was called to repentance by the prophet Nathan, and he did repent. Their child died in a huge rift, but a huge rift began in David's own family. That was part of the consequences of his sin. One of that impacts was that, uh, and Nathan mentioned that his, his family would, that the sword would remain, that difficulties would remain in his family. And at one point, one of David's sons, Absalom, rebels and undertakes a campaign to unseat his father and take over the throne. And one of the people Absalom enlists in his plot is Ahithophel, this trusted advisor to David, who happened to be, if you recall, 
uh, Bathsheba's grandfather. But as the story unfolds, Ahithophel outlines a plot to Absalom, and we heard this in the center section of the larger story this evening, to Absalom, by which he would raise up an army of 12,000 12, soldiers going out immediately to hunt down and kill David. Absalom liked that plan and gave his approval, but if we read on, we hear how that didn't quite work out in that way. It's kind of ironic because perhaps that was the better plan, but David had left behind a spy, Hushai, who outlined a different plan. Rather to raise up a larger army and go out and uh, put, quell uh, David's uh, support more thoroughly at a later time. And Absalom chose to go with that. But Hushai, of course, was laying that instead as a way to let David know and have time to prepare. And, of course, as we know from reading that later on, Absalom, his son, was put to death. Ahithophel died, and David regained the throne, became the throne. But that betrayal uh, haunted David. In fact, it came out, perhaps it was the basis for this Psalm 41 that we also sang today. David said, even my close friend whom I trusted who ate my bread has lifted up his heel against me. David laments that a trusted advisor, perhaps Ahithophel here, has betrayed him, has turned against him and taken steps to try and kill him in order to place someone else on his throne. And Psalm 41 ends up being quoted also by Jesus about his own betrayal. We know the pain that betrayal causes because we have been subjected to it at some point. All of us have. But we don't always think about how our own actions amount to also a betrayal of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ahithophel betrayed David in order to put someone else on the throne. And in a way, that's what our betrayals also do to put ourselves on the throne of our lives. In ways, little ways perhaps, being silenced when we should speak up about Christ's lordship, ignoring God's commandments and seeking to do things our own way, treating others thoughtlessly, and elevating ourselves over them. The results of our betrayal are hurtful to God. It damages our own reputation, that of the good news of salvation as well. People are blinded to the amazing love of Christ because we push Jesus to the background or deny his importance in our own lives. Jesus said, Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of his fathers and, the, and his Father and the holy angels. From Luke 9. Those words are hard to hear because they do strike at our own hearts. We are reminded how we too have betrayed Jesus. But Peter's words in that reading from Acts was also a powerful message of forgiveness. There, Peter was speaking to the crowds who gathered when they healed that lame man there, and he called the Israelites to repentance. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. Peter's words ended with that encouragement, repent therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Again, the call of God to come back, to return to him, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. This is our theme this year. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane knew, though knew all of this, he knew and had predicted Judas's betrayal. He knew about our betrayals as well, that we would fail. He knew that we would betray him in umpteen little ways, without even intending to. And he knew that he had the solution as he spoke, should I not drink the cup that the Father has given me. Jesus was betrayed, but he was betrayed for us, to forgive us and to forgive the sins of others who have sin against us. His betrayal covers over the betrayals of us and others. God says, return to me. I want you to be true to me, but even when you fail at that, I have already stepped in to provide a way. Through Jesus, God offers and gives forgiveness, peace, and the strength to return and turn back to him and receive his blessings. That invitation stands, 
And when we do return to him, we receive all the great gifts that he has promised to us. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb, and our sins are taken away. We are strengthened in Holy Communion, strengthened in the Word of God, which offers us comfort and also gives us words to speak, to testify of our faith in Jesus to others, to encourage others also to turn back to Him, to God. In Him, all is made right, all is made clean, all is brought back together. Jesus is, that, that this event of Jesus being betrayed for us should be an encouragement to us this evening, an encouragement to return from our betrayal, to return to God, to speak of your faith and trust in your Savior Jesus. May you be blessed and strengthened this day and in all that you do. Bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We join in, we continue with the canticle of the Magnificat. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, your love for us remains constant, even when we falter and fail. Help us to recognize our betrayals and to return to you by the cross of Jesus, where he paid for our sin with his life, so that our lives may be restored. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, to the ancient prophets, you call us to return to you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let these Lenten days be a time when remembering how you relentlessly return to us in mercy, we return also to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for your steadfast faithfulness throughout this day. Now that the day is almost over, by the cross of Christ, forgive our past betrayals, both large and small, that we may rest peacefully in your care and awake in the morning, filled with gratitude for your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of light, we thank you for all the mercies you granted to our brother Les Poivola during his earthly life, especially for calling him to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort the survivors who mourn his death with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Keep us mindful that we are mortal, so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, amidst the turmoil of this world, your love for us in Christ remains constant and sure. Guide our hearts to rest in you, that we experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Five stanzas one and two and six through eight. 